It's no secret that Rick and Morty co-creator Justin Roiland and Gravity Falls creator Alex Hirsch are totally besties. Roiland and Hirsch have found ways to pay homage to each other's works in many creative ways, and that includes specific Easter eggs that have found their way into Rick and Morty. We've gathered up some of our personal favorites and compiled them for your viewing pleasure. By the end, you'll be left super pumped for a Rick and Morty slash Gravity Falls crossover. Hey, it's bound to happen someday, right? Ah yes, the infamous Journal 3. This is one of the biggest, most major hints that the universes of Rick and Morty and Gravity Falls are intertwined. So, Journal 3 is an encyclopedic resource that details all kinds of information about the wide range of strange and supernatural creatures that inhabit good old Gravity Falls, Oregon. The characters are constantly referencing it and using it to keep track of their own wacky adventures. Disney even ended up releasing an actual physical copy you can purchase for yourself. This iconic Gravity Falls artifact made an appearance in Rick and Morty's infamous April Fool's Day Season 3 premiere. Yes, that includes all that famous Szechuan sauce nonsense. I'd like to get a 10-piece McNugget and uh, a bunch of the Szechuan sauce, like as much as you're allowed to give me. Notice the stack of books that Morty's carrying. Does that red book at the bottom of the stack look familiar? Many fans have theorized it's Journal 3, and its near-identical appearance makes it clear as to why. La -dee -da. Remember how we mentioned there's a physical copy of it out there in the world that you can buy and own for yourself? Well, it turns out this book contains tons of awesome Rick and Morty Easter eggs. Ain't that something? So not only does Journal 3 appear in Rick and Morty's Season 3 premiere, Journal 3? Season 3? Is anyone sensing a pattern here? There is an interesting little teaser featured on the page that includes Ford's wanted poster. As you may already know, Ford is considered an outlaw in many a dimension due to his stealing supplies to build his quantum destabilizer. Anyway, there's a code in the corner of the poster that when translated spells out the words, Rick was here. Seeing as how there aren't any characters named Rick in Gravity Falls, it's not too difficult to figure out who this Rick really is. I hope you're happy with the adventure so far, Morty. These guys are even lamer than last time. So on this nifty double page entitled, What Does It Mean? You'll notice all these outlines of the different monsters and creatures in the world of Gravity Falls. So many iconic creatures to identify, so little time. But try to keep your focus, people. We're focusing on two in particular. First, you'll notice the outline of a Zygerian the notorious scamming alien race which made its first appearance in the glorious Rick and Morty episode M. Night Sham Aliens. There's an outline of a Plumbus, too. Plus, we have the famous Klolhu, which appears at the start of every Rick and Morty episode in the opening credits. And yes, that is actually how you pronounce Klolhu. It's not Cthulhu or Cthulhu. Yeah, it's Klolhu. Seriously, look that one up. We're not lying. I don't deserve this, Beth. I'm a fraud. Let's delve into the other crazy Gravity Falls Easter eggs that fall outside the realm of Journal 3. Let's talk about the pen, the notebook, and the coffee mug. And while that may sound like a strange spin-off of C.S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia series, we assure you that it isn't. Though we do have to admit that would be a pretty interesting continuation of the series. What would that even look like? Let us know in the comments below. This Easter egg shows up in the episode Close Rick Counters of the Rick Kind, in which Rick is put on trial in front of a council of Ricks from other dimensions. In an attempt to escape, Rick creates a number of portals leading to different dimensions and realities. Rick and Morty head into one, and a split second later, three objects fly out of a portal. A pen, a notebook, and a coffee mug. This is a direct reference to an episode of Gravity Falls entitled Society of the Blind Eye, where Mabel and Dipper's great-uncle Stan loses these three items into a portal. <laughs> Honestly, that was perfect. The Easter eggs and references get even more crazy, spanning television and books and even delving into the terrifying realm of social media. We're talking about the Rick's Diverse Instagram. I don't know who put all this time into putting together this complex labyrinth of space exploration and detailed information, but our hat's off to him. No, we're not actually wearing a hat, but if we were, you'd be dang sure that it would be off. Dang sure! So if you hop on over to this Instagram page, you'll be able to explore all the various planets and quadrants in this universe. There's so much to explore, so we'll give you a couple minutes to get lost. Just be sure not to get too lost. Cool. One of the areas you could explore during the Season 2 break was the wonderful galactic prison where Rick was being held. And no, you're not wrong for thinking the prison looks a little bit like it belongs to the movie Tron. 
In Rick's room, there are a few particular items that reference Gravity Falls tucked in nice and uncomfortably close to a plumbus. And those particular items are the pen, the notebook, and the coffee mug. Back again to haunt your dreams. Remember how we said we wouldn't be referencing Journal 3 anymore? Sorry, we lied. It's just too cool not to reference. If you'd pick up your own copy, you'd understand what we mean. Seriously, who else has a copy of Journal 3? Let us know in the comments below. Let's flip to the section about Ford's adventures. Note the sentence where he mentions that he traveled with bandits, learned to speak 13 languages, got in a fist fight with a talking chair, and got tattoos with a tribe of octopus-armed warrior piglets. As much as we might want to focus on that last bit, it's the talking chair that we're going to be examining. And the reason we're going to be examining it is the Rick and Morty episode entitled Close Recounters of the Rick Kind. And yes, we know we've referenced this episode before, but it's just such a good one. Oh, yeah, murmur it up, D-bags. This is really just an excuse to watch it over and over again. In that episode, Rick and Morty came across a dimension with talking furniture. In that dimension, people are the things that are sat upon, not couches or chairs. They even pass this talking chair out on the sidewalk that looks pretty rough. Maybe it's a recovering, beat-up-looking bum because of its encounter with Ford. Oh my god! I, th I, th I, th I thought you went to a concert! We forgot the tickets! Look, we try to keep things as appropriate as possible here on the Screen Rant channel, but the reality is with shows like Rick and Morty and Gravity Falls, you just can't do that. Honestly, it's surprising that Gravity Falls aired on the Disney Channel. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. Sweet Sally. Case in point, Mr. Poopy Butthole. Ooh wee! Whatever you want, Rick, we're here to help! Mr. Poopy Butthole is a friend of the Smiths from another dimension. He's zany and wacky and always spouting the most magnificent lines of dialogue you could possibly imagine. This theory comes from Redditor Captain Cumin, who suggests that Mr. Poopy Butthole and Gravity Falls' big baddie Bill Cipher are one and the same. The theory is a bit of a stretch, involving all kinds of convoluted reasoning. The main idea is that they're both mysterious figures who randomly show up out of nowhere. After their first appearances, they became oddly omnipresent characters in their respective series. Sure, maybe it's crazy, but how amazing would it be if this theory proves true? You know what, kid? You've convinced me. I'm sold! And that brings us to our next big theory. Bill Cipher, the big baddie from Gravity Falls himself. Bill Cipher is a dream demon who terrorizes the city of Gravity Falls. He's a creepy pyramid with an eyeball, top hat, bow tie, and arms and legs. Actually, he's kind of cute. Anyway, this guy is all over Rick and Morty. He pops up in the most unlikely places just to freak you out. One of his first appearances is in the Season 2 episode of Rick and Morty entitled Big Trouble in Little Sanchez. In it, Morty's parents Jerry and Beth visit the planet Nuptia 4 to undergo some marriage counseling. The opening credits of the episode haven't even concluded by the time this easter egg pops up. Check out that monitor in the background. Notice anything pyramid-shaped? Something with a top hat and an eyeball, perhaps? And that's not the only reference! In the Season 1 episode, Rick's D Minutes, there's a taxi cab that appears on a TV screen. The taxi label on the cab's roof is pyramid-shaped with a light that looks like a strange eyeball. It cannot be a coincidence. Rick has encountered a decent amount of trouble while traversing the universe and various dimensions. But to be fair, he's also caused a decent amount of trouble as well, hence his status as a wanted man. Where do we even begin with Rick's crimes? He's frequently ingesting illegal substances like those Calaxian crystals. And these babies just saved this lame-ass party! Wubble up a dub dub! He drives under the influence and with open containers. He's constantly forcing Morty to smuggle things in, uh... And I'm gonna need you to put him way up inside your butthole, Morty. In my butt. And he even buys Morty a dirty robot. This does not even account for all the murders and robbery and whatnot. But hey, we still love the guy. Remember that Ford Wanted poster we mentioned earlier in the video? That inscription that states Rick was here? What if it's not just Rick putting up alien graffiti somewhere random? What if it suggests some kind of working relationship between Ford and Rick? Seriously, would it really be that much of a stretch? What if Ford was part of Rick's gang along with Bird Person and Squanchy? And what if they all hopped around the galaxy together, causing all kinds of mischief? Since Ford is wanted for stealing items with a quantum destabilizer, why wouldn't they team up? What if Rick and his friends are wanted because they were helping Ford with his mission? And just like Rick, Ford hides amongst his family members. Why didn't we see it sooner? Oh, right, because he was hiding. Duh. Good one, Morty. And last but not least, we have Mabel and Dipper Pine, everyone's favorite twin siblings that aren't named Luke and Leia. The Pine twins first got involved in the wonderful world that is Gravity Falls when they went to spend the summer with their great-uncle Stan. 
Mabel is all up for this new experience, but it takes Dipper a little longer to adjust. Eventually, though, they both settle right in. Well, you know, minus all the insanity and misadventures they experience. But still, you live and learn, right? The Mabel and Dipper Easter egg is a bit more subtle and difficult to spot. The second you do notice it, however, you won't be able to unsee it. The moment takes place in the April Fool's Day Season 3 opener, when Rick and Morty arrive at the Council of Ricks. We've already pointed out Morty's carrying Journal 3 in a stack of books, because we can't not point out Journal 3. But take a look at the background. Notice anything interesting? You'll have to take a real close look, but if you've got sharp vision, you'll notice Mabel and Dipper versions of Morty standing side by side. They're dressed like Morty, but check out that headband. And what about that hat? It's all connected, people! Nothing will ever be the same again! So, how about it? Did you already know about these Gravity Falls Easter eggs and Rick and Morty? Are there any big ones that we might have missed? How do you feel about an epic crossover between the two series? Let us know in the comments below. And hey, while you're at it, be sure to subscribe to our channel. That way you can keep up with all the great content we're beaming into your dimension daily!